Okay, so we talked about SRGS grammars and what makes up an SRGS grammar. So let's actually create one. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to create a, a grammar that's going to accept numbers from 1 to 999. We'll call that our small number grammar. Now to start this grammar off, we need to start off with, people might say 1, 2, 9, right? You might say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we'll make a base rule, and that base rule will have 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, using that um, pipe symbol to separate each one. Then we're going to go ahead and we'll have our teens rule, because someone might say 12, 11, so on and so forth. And so here's our teens rule. Then we'll go ahead and we'll produce our 20 and up. And this might be 20 or 30 or 40 or 50. And if you notice, we'll actually put an optional base on at the end. And that optional base will allow for people to say 21. Okay. Now I can use weights to tell the engine what to expect. Because in fact, 9 times out of 10, someone's going to say 21 versus just say 20. Or 20 and a base. Now um, after that, we'll produce our tens rule. Right. Our tens rule is going to go ahead and it'll be base, or teens, or 20 and up. And that will cover every number between 1 and 99. So again, can I use weights to um, help the ASR engine know what probabilities there would be that 8 times out of 10, someone's going to say 20, a number that's 20 and up versus um, a base or just a teen number. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll, we need to handle our hundreds, right? So we're going to go ahead and add a hundred. Now, now we can optionally say a hundred, or we'll say a base hundred, right? And I can again add weights, and I can say nine times out of ten. Someone's going to say a base and then a hundred. So 100, 300, 400, so on and so forth. So now we're, we're nearing the end. I can go ahead and add in my small number. Now, small number is supposed to incorporate effectively everything. And so how am I going to do that? Well, I have my 100 rule. And then I have a double optional going on here. So I have optionally 10s. And inside that 10s rule, I actually have optionally and. Because someone might say 157, 157. Or someone might just say 157. Or they might say 157. So I'm handling, trying, I'm trying to predict, again, how people say things. If I didn't have that optional and in there, then if someone said 157, because I didn't do a good job predicting the way people might say stuff, then I'm going to get that wrong, right? Because it's going to try to fit in that word and and apply it to a number, okay? Which isn't going to work out very well. I'm probably going to get a low confidence score. But it's not like it's it will try to fit it in. And so that's, it kind of just highlights the point that you try to predict everything the caller is going to say in response to your prompt. So I have my hundreds rule and I have my and tens. And then what I can do is I have just optionally tens, right? So that's going to cover the stuff below a hundred. And my rule is kind of forming up. So I have, I can apply my weights to uh, nine times out of ten. So I was going to say the hundreds rule versus uh, 1 out of 10, they're going to just say the tens rule. Um, likewise, I can say 99% uh, of the time, people are, are not going to say just a hundred. They will have um, a stuff after a hundred. Um, I'll have my root rule, which will specify my small number. And again, that root rule is the starting point. So if I jump to small number, I see how all of my rules lay out. If I had an additional rule that wasn't specified, for example, I could throw in here a zero rule. Because it's not referenced by any other rule, and especially not the root rule, that zero rule would never be utilized. Um, I'll throw my, my header on top, and boom, I have my small number grammar. And it was pretty easy. Now, what this has done for me is I now have the ability to interpret when a caller tells me a number below 1,000. What I don't, though, have is the actual solid number 997, if I said 997. What I have are the actual text words 997. Oftentimes, though, I don't care about the words. I care about the number. And so to get that number out, we need to do an interpretation on the text. Now, you can do that interpretation in your actual programming, but it's rather painful to do that because um, 
sometimes your language that you're using to program in is not necessarily the best interpretive language. So what's been created is what's called semantic interpretation for speech recognition. And we're going to talk about that in the next section. That is, how do we change this from a, the words 997 to the number 997? All right, thank you very much.